Hi, hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Gonna be doing something a little bit different again. i um, got new projects I wanna be doing, which is converting my old my mountain bike into an e-bike. Um, main reason why I'm doing this is because when we, I use my bike for work every day, um, and I do 12 hour nights sometimes, a lot, well, every shift. And, and I struggle with being able to cycle on night shifts, especially up some of the big hills that I've got where I live. Um, so I borrowed my boy's um, e-bike, which I'll show you in a minute, um, and it's made a lot of difference getting up the hills and that's the main reason why I want to convert mine. So what I do is I grab the camera and I'll show you the kit I've got that I bought. Um, I'll show you the boys bike and my bike and I'm going to try and work out how to fit it all. Never done this before so this is going to be a bit of a challenge and hopefully fingers crossed it all goes well. Alright so first thing looking at my boys bike so he bought this for about 700 quid second hand and this is a 250 watt back hub driven bike it's not bad it's a bit hard on the straights because of the restrictions and the weight of the bike um, and because of the back hub you lose a lot of top and gears so you're struggling to get up to a decent speed but going uphill it works okay and it gets me up some of the big hills so it sort of revolutionized my thinking because I was dead against going e-bike but like I say doing my 12 hour nights when I get up at 6 in the morning I want to be able to get up the hills um, and this made a lot of difference, so I decided to do mine. But I didn't want to go hub one, I'm going to go for the front mid drive. So this is my bike. This is a Balderman 8.6 mountain bike, MHT mountain bike. Um, like I say, never done this before, so it's going to be a bit of an experience. I bought a kit from a company, I'll put it up here, called Cogsy Gogs, if I pronounce that right. Um, I'll put a link at the bottom from where I bought it from. And they sell a quite a few kits that are quite reasonably priced, all in stock in the UK and delivery within a few days. So I'll show you what the kit looks like. So looking at the kit, I have a Bifang mid-drive motor, which should fit hopefully into the shaft. It comes with a throttle, some hydraulic cables and sensor see how that goes because my bike's are hydraulic um, a load of cables a light that's supposed to plug into it um, some nice gloves it comes with an extractor tool for taking out your crank but um, I shouldn't need that on mine I've got a different setup um, it comes with the main tool hopefully that works for getting off my crank I had to buy this separately this is a little tiny tool just for the taking out uh, my pedal pedal cover front bits I'll show you in a minute um, which is specifically for the Shimani, I believe. And then you've got lithium battery and charger. So that's most of the kit. So what I'll do is I'll set the tripod up and we get on first with taking out my main crank and seeing if I can get the motor to fit in. Right, so the first thing is I'm going to be using this tool here to take out this nut. This is um, a tool that I bought from Amazon. So I'll put a link down below on where you get this from. And this is purely for the Shimano pedals, I believe. Right, so this fits in the hole, and if I grab hold of it, a bit more. should take that centre part, cover out. There's one on each side of the pedal. Right, do have to take the bolts right out on that. They must be catching through to the splines and that is quite easy for me getting the pedal off right and then we got this bolt here now I've got an SMBB52 on these which should be able to unscrew for taking out the crank and I don't know whether the tool they gave me will fit so this will be interesting oh, it does. so that's one bonus so we're going to undo that now and take this part off 
Hi. So I've got the nut loose. Um, using this tool day supplier, it's not the best tool out there. If I was going to do this more often, and I was lucky really, I'd probably go and buy a decent tool that'll sit over this because this has got really small spikes to grip into here, and this is really tight. Um, I've had to use a hammer to knock it to loosen it off, and it's almost pulling the alley um, parts off the thread here, and probably would strip this thread. Um, which then you're going to be really hard stuffed to getting this off, you have to use mould grips and stuff. So there is a better socket that you can get that slots over this and has bigger cutouts to fit into these grooves a bit wider um, that will grip this a bit better. But I'm lucky um, because it has actually come loose but if it was going to be too much more and started stripping more I probably would have given up and bought the correct tool. Although I say that correct tool, this is the right, uh, uh, the right tool to fit, it's just if I grab the camera, you'll see. So hopefully you can see here, um, it slots over, and if you get a decent socket, it will take up the whole of the grip of these, rather than these little spikes, metal spikes, which are not gripping the full length. Um, but it is working for now, so it's down to you and what risk you want to take. All right, so now that's that part off. Uh, I'm gonna knock the socket out. And I'll have to turn the bike over to let's take the chain off to work on the other side, taking out the nut on the other side. So I turn the cam off. I'm going to turn the bike around um, and see if I can get the bolt off the other side. All right. So now working on the other side, I can hopefully get this part out and be working on this one here now. And I hope this one comes off as good as the last one. Um, if you look at the parts, it does say on there whether it's right or left-handed nuts. It does say on here what way the nut turns to undo because one side's, I think, I believe one side's left and one side's a right handed thread. Um, so we'll have a go at this one. Getting this one off now. Right. That one went a lot easier. Probably because the other one's been loose, maybe. There you go. It's the last bit out. So I've grabbed the, um, some cleaning cloth now, give all this a clean up um, before we look at putting the motor in and see how that goes. Right, so I'm just trying the motor in and come across a major problem already, which I thought this might be the case. I think I've read about this with this type of bike. And the problem is this point here, where this arm comes out here, it catches this part of the gearing on the motor, which prevents it from going in fully. I don't know if you can see, but I've got about, at least a, probably about an 8 to 10 mil gap there because this won't it hits against the frame so it might be a major issue with fitting this on this bike but i'm going to go ahead with do it see if i can modify it one of the things i can do is see if i can get a spacer in here to means i'll be able to talk against the spacer to the crank which would be the best thing um also just to mention all this screw here which is a retaining screw for the cables and pushed through to the crank so it stopped the motor going in. So if you're having trouble getting the motor through the shaft, it's because that screw just loosened that off. Um, yeah, so one of the things is, that, like I say, put spacer in. I could see if there's any way of getting, removing some of the metal on the here, depending on how thick that is, but that would obviously take away the warranty on the motor, which is a big issue. Um, so that's one thing to look at. Um, this also makes an issue on this side because um, the bolts here, to so put, let me just grab hold of it, to put this on. Um, are not long enough now, so I've made I've got some other bolts, so that's not a major issue. That that would work, um, and this should dig into the frame when that goes on. So that gives you another one mil, maybe two mil on that. Um, I could reduce the size on that a little bit as well, just give me more, because then you've got trouble with getting the main locking nut on, um, because there isn't so much thread with that bracket on as well. And with that locking nut, as I'll show you down here, and with that locking nut that goes on, ring goes on, you have another one that goes over that basically two nuts on together, locks on together. Um, not a major issue. I can probably get away with using some Loctite, which I'm going to go for. Um, I might be look at different types of Loctite um, if it comes loose. The main issue that I see is that I'll be putting this against that point there. Um, at the moment, I'm going to go ahead with a build just to try it out and see how the motor goes before I do anything major. Um, worst case scenario, I'll be putting this on a different bike. 
because I've got two other bikes I can put try it on. I just wanted to fit it. I was hoping to get it to this bike. Um, the other thing is this hydraulic cable. The motor's sitting down as it comes down on that hydraulic. So I'll be taking that off, putting this out. Um, rather than packing this out, which I've seen other people do, which you could do, um, but I want it to pack against the frame, um, I'll just take that out and reroute it over here, which wouldn't be an issue then. Other than that, that's okay. Right, so I'm going to go ahead with installing it as it is, um, just to try the motor out and see how it goes. Because one, oh, another issue it will happen, if I can't get this flush against the frame over here, it probably will make a major problem the alignment on the chain on the other side. Because I'm losing a few mil, which might mean losing the top gears on the bike, which would be a bit of a shame. Alright, so I just temporarily fitted the sprocket. Um, this is a much larger sprocket than was designed for the bike originally. So I could look at getting a small sprocket. One of the issues might come a problem is that this is quite close to the frame here. Um, it's not actually touching now, um, so it shouldn't touch. It's only if the frame, uh, the uh, chain comes off. Um, and then because this is such a bigger sprocket, the chain's not um, is too small for using the back gears. I've just had a practice and it's never going to get on this back um, cog. But I could get a bigger frame, a uh, bigger chain to do that. But then that's the low gear which I've never ever use really. I'll just bring the gears down a bit. And I'll bring it down to the bottom one. All right, so that's running on the bottom one, which runs pretty true. So at least with all the problems of the spacing and stuff, it's not really putting the chain out of alignment um, for the bottom gears and all the way up to the um, the furthest lowest gear, it's been fine. Um, that's something I could look at one of the things I can look at is getting a small sprocket on here um, and I do need a new chain anyway because this chain's had a lot of damage so that's something to look into Right, so next job is fitting the battery so I bought a 48 volt 13 amp hour battery which is the smallest I believe I could get um, I know I'm going to have trouble fitting this in the frame which I can't do um, it comes with a USB output um, a security to be able to take the plate off the bottom if I undo that that'll slide out if you can get it on the frame I'll leave that off a minute um, an on off switch and a charging port um, and it comes with a charger as well if I can get it open so in the pack also comes um, a couple of mounting bolts for putting the plate on and some fuses now the fuses are quite it's quite strange in the way that um, they've given you fuses and in the manual it says that if there's problems with it charging, dis uh, working, replace the fuses. Um, but I've looked over the whole battery and there's nowhere on this battery that you can put any fuses. So if anyone knows of a magic fuse point, point that I've got to push a button to get to it. But that's the plate as well and there's no fuse holders anywhere on this. Now I can only assume that the fuses are internal and you've got to undo this take this top off to get to the fuses which if you do you break that seal which means you're avoiding the warranty anyway so great idea of putting the fuses probably inside I assume um, the cabling that comes with it it's got no fuses now I could put my own fuse in which I probably will do um, because it's worth having a fuse if anything goes wrong with that motor um, I don't want to burn out the battery so for now the Issues I've got, if I just put the plate back in, hang on. Right, so the issues I've got is that this will fit in the frame, but with no movement at all. So I wouldn't be able to put it in there with the plate, bolting the plate in, and I wouldn't be able to get the battery out again um, for security reasons, if I wanted to take it out. I knew this was going to be an issue when I bought it. Um, every battery I measured up for this frame wasn't going to fit. So I could mount it up here, but that's not going to be ideal when I want to jump off the bike I might hurt myself and I could mount it underneath which is what I've seen on other people do but it can get a bit grubby and stuff now I'm going to go initially for now with this set up until I play with it and see what I feel with putting it on the back here because I have a back frame for carrying and I've got a carry bag so the idea then I could actually put this in the carrier bag case so it's a bit more hidden um, protected against the weather, although they are waterproof, but all the cabling that can be in that bag, and I can still use the bag then. So that's what I'm going to go for. The option is to put it on here for now and get this thing up and running.
Right, so I've just run some of the cables up the frame. Um, a little bit messy, but um, it'll do for now for this test. And that's all going up and connecting onto the main display up there, which is all I've done up there. For the battery side, um, the connections are here and going up to the rack. Not too um, happy with these ones because they're going to get water in there and excessive water. If it starts tracking across, it's going to cause problems with the battery. So that's how I need to sort that. Um, but this is only a temporary bit. I'm starting to sort out the back sensor. <clears throat> so this sensor um, picks up when the wheel's moving. Um, it's just a little tiny plastic bit that cable ties onto the frame. And there's a little screw in the side here, um, which allows me to move this in and out um, to get it as close as I can to the wheel. And it's got a little magnetic connection that screws onto the wheel that it picks up. Um, and I'll cut the cable ties. I've managed to get one through here so it doesn't, there's less chance of it moving. Um, this little nut here, annoyingly, they use an Allen keyed ones with the little tiny piece in the middle, which I don't have many off, but luckily I've managed to go full market and find one. Um, I don't know whether it's coming in focus, but they're little Allen bolts, um, but they have the hole in the middle, which we I very, very rarely use. So I'm going to get this set up, and then we get our batteries on charge. Um, I've got to put pedals on. And we see if we can get this turning. So with my hydraulic brakes, they give you these little sensor cables. It's got a plug on one end um, and a sensor which has got a sticky pad on the other, which I'm assuming I'm gonna stick on here somehow. And then they give you inside here is a couple of little magnets. You can see the silver thing. There's two in there, one for each brake pad. Um, I'm assuming they can be stuck on somewhere so that when that comes close to the sensor, it cuts the motor out, or comes away from the sensor, so it cuts the motor out. Um, so I'm gonna have a good play with that and see how that works. Right, so a little update on the motor fit. Um, I did a little test run with the bike and it works quite well, so I thought I'd modify the bike a little bit to get this to fit properly. Um, so one of the things I've done is, I don't know if you can see it a bit better light there, is um, I put a washer in here um, which I've managed to fit. You can buy these shims, um, but it's just easy to make my own. Um, so this allows this there to bolt up against the frame a bit tighter. And I took the paintwork off, which gives me another, I don't know, half a mil on that. Um, and I've taken the paint off here so it's not touching the frame there, this part. And on this side, I've run the hydraulic brake fluid uh, cable through the back there. Um, I've packed out these with washers. I've reduced this ring by at least one mil or more and I've reduced the frame part by at least one mil and this has managed to allow me to get this nut on almost fully on now. I'm about one fed out. Um, it's been locked, um, some locked tight thread lock, well, thread lock I've put on um, and I've also wire wound the wire all the way through which goes through to the frame. Hopefully that's all standing focus. Um, so that should hold it into place as well, or at least give me, if it comes loose, it'll stop it coming undone. So I've ordered a new sprocket as well, a smaller one. Um, that hasn't turned up yet, so that'll make it less likely to, um, or not so close to the frame. Although it's not touching the frame, so I'm not too worried. So it's not touching the frame at all and it runs quite well. So my next job is going to be running the cables back through and, and then I've still got to sort out mounting that battery. I still haven't decided whether I'm going to leave the battery in the back or put it on the front frame. Um, the issue with it on the back is that the back is really heavy and it makes the front wheel light. Um, putting it up the front there, it means it's going to get covered in mud and dirt and water. Right, so for my battery, I've decided to put it inside my bag, which is in here, um, and it's only held on then by the straps, which are quite secure at the moment. And the reason for that is that I can easily detach the battery like this. Um, you grab the bag and take it with me if I'm leaving the bike in a place where there's potential of it being stolen. Um, and it keeps the bike the battery nicely concealed and nicely protected against the weather, although they are waterproof. Um, so I thought that was quite a good idea at the moment. Um, only issue I have at the moment is it's catching on the seat, so I might have to move the seat forward or move the bag back. So I'm going to look into that in a minute. 
um, all the cable runs are done as well, down to the motor. Alright, so my next job is to fit these. These are switch, there's two switches each um, with a little magnet um, that go onto my brake handles and they work by as the magnet comes further away from the switch it shuts the motor down so these are just stuck on with some sticky tape tapes now with this display I have a symbol on here which is showing an explanation mark in a circle so like a brake pad um, and if I bring the magnet close together so the magnet now is touching you can see the light's gone out and if I bring the magnet further away you can see the light comes on so the bonus now is that I can actually use a ruler and measure how close I need to come. So about 10 mil there, the light's going to act, and if I put it away, the light goes off, comes on even. Um, so the good thing about that is that I can work out roughly, and I've worked it out to be about 10 mil. I need to have within 10 mil um, for this to work, and I can put this on the brake pads now, uh, brake handles now, and set it up with that exclamation circle and um, so make sure it's working properly all right so the bike's pretty much finished now and working i've been using it for the last couple of weeks doing my shifts um brilliant about it, about it now is that i'm using it on night shifts which i'm going to be doing nights tonight as well um, and it's getting me up the hills with no hassle at all now where some of the hills i've got one of them is like so hard i end up walking off it nowadays um, used to be able to do it when i was younger but not so much now um, so now i can get up it um, and i can do the nights without being so tired after 12 hour nights. So it's been um, the best thing I've done really for the bike. Um, I've got the camera, there's a couple of little things I need to do um, and I'll show you the bits that I've got left to do. Right, so little things that need to be done. The sensors here on the hydraulic brakes works really, really well, but I'm gonna put some aerodite on them um, so I can get rid of this cable tie. Other than that, they're pretty much done. Um, I need to cable tie this up, which is the cable loom I made up because it's starting to drop a bit. And you can see over there that these cable ties are starting to come loose. So that's one important thing to do. The other thing is I'm going to upgrade my brake pads. Um, probably need doing on the back anyway. They've been a few years old now. Uh, the battery pack, which is in the bag, works perfectly well. I quite like that because I can take that off. I'll just get to work now, take the battery out and put it on charge when I get to work. So that's really nice. Um, the negative side of having the battery in the back, which I think I mentioned, is that the front wheel is a lot more lighter. So if you're using this off-roading for mountain biking, it's probably not the ideal way of doing it. You really want the battery on that front end. But for me, going to work and back, this is perfect. The chain needs replacing. I've got a new chain already. So this is a new chain that I've got, and I've got a quick-release mechanism for this. I'm tempted to just make this up, chain up with a quick-release and put it in the backpack so that I have it if the chain ever breaks and carry on with this chain from there and then replace that at some point. Um, so I've got everything in the backpack to get me out of trouble if I ever get in trouble. And I've got a new front sprocket, which is this one here. It's a 38 teeth sprocket. So that'll be going on over the next week. So that'll make a little bit different from getting the lower gears, but I've not ever needed the lower gears, but it still sets up the chain much better. Other than that, I think that's mostly all I need to do really. Um, the bike's pretty, been running pretty well for the last two weeks doing 12 hour shifts going to and from work so it's been pretty good for that. Right so that's pretty much it for this vlog. Um, just to mention the front um, motor connections where I put the um, nut on and wire locks it on it's been perfectly right for two weeks never had any movements on that at all so um, I don't think I'm going to get any hassle with that. So hopefully that's been handy for anyone out there who wants to convert a Balderman like this um, and how, to, how I've done it. Um, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll keep putting some videos out on YouTube.